Today we're tasting the avocado me. Now, before you get too ahead of yourself, we have had some commenters that are confused about what actually is avocado mead. It's not guacamole. It's not guacamole. There is no avocado in this honey that we use to make it. It's made from wow. avocado honey. It just means that the bees that collected the honey used avocado blossom pollen as their primary source. Yes. Sorry, no poor cam today. Somebody complained about our music, and so it kind of irritated Brian. They said it was Duck Dynasty music. We have never seen Duck yeah, Dynasty, no so we have no idea what their music was that they used, but I've we can tell you we did not select the music yeah. for that purpose. I was like, okay, all. well, then let's just not do a poor cam today. But anyway, on a more positive note. <laughs> the color of this is awesome. And it's, it's black. this crazy dark. It looks like coffee or cola, as you have said. Yeah. Cola. And if you tilt it slightly and look it up to the light, it is clear. It's yeah, just I believe it's clear. Oh, yeah. You can see through it. Stupid dark. I see light through it. <laughs> so clarity is fine. This is about seven weeks old. It is a 1.022 uh, final gravity, and it's like 11% alcohol. So it's um, reasonable. You know, it's like middle of the road. Um, this one, we did add some allspice berries, we did add some cardamom pods, and we back-sweetened it with honey, then we pasteurized. Now, this bottle was not pasteurized, but that should not affect flavors for the purposes of what we're doing. This bottle wasn't pasteurized because we had to do the tasting right away, and the bottles are over there. They're very warm, and I don't really want to drink hot meat. Yeah, I don't think that would be pleasant. Yeah. Not in this It'd be, particular... It wouldn't be fair for the tasting. Yeah. Um, so, right off the bat... With the aroma, I am getting cola. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I just am. <laughs> I get the, I, I get cola, like she said. I do, I do get it a little bit. I'm also getting the allspice and the cardamom, though. That's really what's making it smell and taste like cola. There's a little bit of a coffee scent in there. And a little bit of smoke, like a bo, uh, Beauchade honey. Yeah. Like a, a caramel. Yes, I'm going to say it that way every time. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a really interesting smell. I can't say that I love the smell, but I don't hate it. It's, it's interesting. Not a lot of honey in it though. I don't really get honey so much in the smell. No, there's, there's a sweetness, but I think yes. it's because I'm so much associating this with like caramel brown with burnt sugar cola that i'm like it's gonna be sweet because it's cola. Which is really funny because she doesn't drink it I like don't. we don't drink soda at all no. so for her to have that as her go-to on this is kind of crazy you ready for the short sip uh sure by the way i'd like to point something out as far as the pork ham that's not why we didn't do one today. I just, we don't always do them. we got to keep you on your toes. Yeah. But somebody did actually comment on that. <laughs> and I'm not upset by it. It just kind of took me a little bit by surprise because, you know, we just try to do something fun and interesting. Somebody's always going to complain about everything you do. I know, but Duck Dynasty just seemed like kind of <laughs> left field thing to me. So, and I'm not really trying to pick on the person that did it. I mean, if that's the way they feel, that's the way they feel. And it's a valid point. It's just, wow, that was a little off. Anyway. On the short sip, though, it's not unpleasant. It's very... I'm going to take another short sip. Very potent. It has a lot going oh, on. Yeah. And it's not depth It's to not it. shy. It, it, no. It smacks you in the face. It kind of reminds me of, like, an Isla whiskey, where it's just like, here I am! Yeah. Yeah. Kapow! Yeah, it definitely, there's a lot going on here, and it definitely does kind of hit you in the face. And then after it hits you, it stands there looking at you, waiting for you to come to, and hits you again. <laughs> it's it's definitely one of those. Like, it, yeah, that's a, what you going to do about it, huh? Yeah, it, it's like, definitely oh, like that. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> but anyway, on the... You know, on the on the short sip, I got I definitely got more caramel flavors, like a burnt sugar. Uh, that I definitely get burnt sugar. It's not burnt coffee so much anymore. It used to be burnt coffee. Now it's burnt sugar. Mm -hmm. A little bit sweeter than it was before. Quite a bit, actually. Um, still not a lot of honey character. Um, slightly floral. There's something floral in there. And then the spices come in. And I think it's now balanced. It actually has some balance now. It kind of reminds me 
of one of those old time medicines where yeah. you go out into the woods and forage a bunch of herbs and root beer. It's like old time root a, beer. Make a thing. Oh, and we have a fawn. Say you're gonna drink this because it's good for you, and you're just like, okay. Uh, Can you even see her? You see my hand in her tail. <laughs> here, come here. You want to be this? A part is of this? Derica's cat. No, she is. She's she's no. done. She's shy. Uh, she is not shy. And. I know our friend Paul does a lot of really interesting combinations, and now he's got Adam hooked, and Adam's doing it too. And I'm wondering, like, we asked them what we should do with this, and I feel like... We didn't give them the whole story. We should just take this and get on a plane and go to the UK. (laughs) And this would be the dream sequence part of the show, (laughs) where we show doing that, but we didn't, because I'm pretty sure... UK isn't allowing Americans in yeah, at this point no. because of COVID stuff. But that'd be cool, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would make a great, great video. Um, so I am ready for the long sip, and she's already doing hers, where you just kind of hold it in your mouth and savor the flavors, get a feel for what it, what the beverage is all about. I have to say I hate this much less now than I did before we back sweetened it. <laughs> I got her. You okay? Whoops. <laughs> that was almost embarrassing. Um, <laughs> yeah, there. When I took my long slip that time, there was there was a tasting note that just flashed, and I was Dark like, fruit. "Oh, it was that?" And then it went away, and I was like, "But what? What? What was that?" Dark fruit. And I don't have the name. Like plum. And like, I almost wanted to say it was peppermint or spearmint. Oh. But. Well, see, now you're going to have to have more. It wasn't. I know. It wasn't that. It was, it was something. I interrupted her long sip. It was something other than cola. (laughs) Um. I'm going to do another long sip. This is a really interesting beverage. And I think it's funny how Brian said that he hates it less now that we've sweetened it. And that's why I nearly spit it all over the place in an eruption of giggles. Because I understood exactly what he meant by that. It, it, before it was just like, I'm reminding you of cola, but cola that's but flat and gross. bad. Yeah. And now it's like, I'm reminding you of cola, but I'm reminding you of other things. And I'm making you think more about it. And I may have scooted myself into the experience beverage rather than yeah. the... Ooh, this is icky beverage. I'm now, I'm, I'm a long glow, sip. A glowing review, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm a long sip. I got a little bit of honey that time. Some sweetness. I almost felt like dark fruit, like a plum or something in there. It was fleeting, but it was there. That's why I thought that's what she was talking about. No. I get a little bit of caramel, almost a touch of marshmallow even. And then on the finish, it goes into this bitter thing that kind of cancels out all the sweetness. It makes for a very long finish, though. The finish on this is less pleasant than the taste itself, I find. After I swallow, it's less pleasant. Wow, that's a long, long sip. Well, that time I was searching for what I found again, and... I think perhaps it was just a synapse misfire because I didn't get it that time, but I was trying to think, okay, what am I familiar with? And the first thing that I thought of that time was tea, a specific type of tea. Hmm. But what that specific type of tea is, I don't know, but that was where my brain was was going, was, oh, I think maybe it was a tea that you were thinking of, and all the voices in my head started having an argument. It's a terrible thing. Hmm. Um, I don't I don't get tea. But I do get a little bit of coffee. Even a dark chocolate hint. Yeah, yeah. And I'm even getting that textural feeling on my tongue yep. that I often get with, from with dark, dark, chocolate. dark chocolate. Yep. Yep. Very much. It's more dark chocolate than coffee now yes. that I'm really, yep. really exploring it. Yeah. But I, om- I still get a little bit of like a dark plum to go with that dark chocolate. And then add in the, the caramel notes. It has the tannic quality to me, the, the astringent tannic quality that Beauchets have. 
that almost a burnt flavor. Yeah, it's really interesting going back and reviewing in my head what we put in this. I don't taste the allspice or cardamom as to much. to what we're getting now. It, it it's, seems like... Melded. It seems like we put tons of stuff in this to make this happen. Not really. But we didn't. It was just two types of honey and some spices. Yep. And that was it. Yep. I'm glad we back sweetened with a neutral honey because I think avocado honey might have overpowered it a little, a little bit too much yeah. and made it too much. I think a brew of half avocado honey, half wildflower would be so much better. Right. And that's what I was reminiscing pondering if you will when we were finishing this, this up if we you know had our tardis went back in time and redid this i think of starting off with a honey blend from yeah. the very beginning avocado might, honey is strong might give you a smoother uh beverage to end with um but this is what you do when you get a honey you've oh, never sure. worked with before yeah. you make a traditional from it and go from there. You can yeah. always adjust and make it. Because now this is palatable. This is, I mean, I don't love it, but it's palatable. Yeah. I'm kind of thinking Terry might like it. So, you know, there we go. Well, yeah. T Dad might like it. Paul and Adam might like it. Yep. You know. Well, I'm saying the actual the, bottles the, the that we have have to get consumed. To um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, I wish I could connect with what I was thinking of of flavor profiles to share with you so that you get a better understanding of what I'm experiencing, but I'm having difficulty, but it's definitely dark. It's definitely smoky. It's definitely, mm -hmm. uh, so those rich tones. Eating with food, cooking with food. I would say this would go with meat. Yes. Barbecue. Meat. Anything smoked. This would go with like skewers and, um, yakitori skewers types of things. Um, I can even see this with baked beans. Yep. Like I can see really this with... really hearty baked beans. I see this with really spicy food. Um, I think it works for that too. Like a, a Korean or Vietnamese really spicy food. Especially their Korean barbecue. Anything that's subtle or delicate, no. Yeah, this would overpower. This, would this, just, is, this is a punchy in the face kind yeah. of thing. So you need a punchy in the face kind of food. Yeah. Um, it works well with basically any Mexican food, I think, be, that is spicy. As long as it's got some spice to it. Um, this complements some of those flavors really, really nicely. Actually, Brian's enchilada sauce has a really great texture and flavor combination where it has those smoky notes in it just by the spices that he puts in it. And I think that would work really well with this. Yes. So your enchiladas and this oh, meat. Okay, my enchiladas. Um, as far as cooking with it, it's a tough call. Uh, I might put it into like a corned beef and cabbage. Maybe. It's it's difficult. It it could substitute for beer in some of those kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah. It sort of has similar characteristics. It might add nice flavors. A chili, this could probably go into. As far as other things, not really. It's not a dessert, desserty thing. It's not no. sweet enough. It's it's very much, it packs a punch. Yeah. Okay? Um, as far as putting it into a mug or a horn and enjoying it for a while, it's that kind of meat. I it, think it's more of a sipper for me. Yeah. It's it's not a drink mass quantity. Yeah, it's, it's not a chug. It's it's, it's a, a sipper, not a chugger. There we go. There we go. We just made up two new terms for, for describing <laughs> meads. Yeah, this is definitely a sipper. You don't want to have like huge mouthfuls of it, especially if somebody's going to make a joke or something right next yeah. to you. Um, I believe I have a score. Oh, but you know what? I, my initial score. No, I need another taste. I actually think is too high. That's where I'm at too. I think I'm a little high. Now, if you know our scoring system, one means it's probably toxic, and you wouldn't give it to your worst enemy. Five means I'd drink it. I wouldn't. It might not be the first thing I reach for, but I'd drink it. I would choose that. Um, below five, probably I would say, nah, I don't need to drink that bad. Okay. 10 means it's the shining paragon of <laughs> exemplary purpose of the style of mead that it is. Now, that is to say, you could have a 10 in one thing and a 10 in another thing that taste vastly different, but it just means there's really nothing you could do to improve it. Um, we've given out a couple of 10s, and I think they were justified um, at 
at the time. It's hard to get another debt. It is. It's really hard. All right. I have... I have to taste it. Okay. See, I'm at that line of, if I was to put this in a mug and sit while we were watching TV or playing Dungeons and Dragons or even just talking with friends, would I want to finish the mug or would I get halfway through and go, <laughs> you know, that's kind of, that is exactly where I'm at. It's literally on that very fine edge. And then it's not even would I do that, it's would I choose to put it into the mug in the first place. Yeah. That's the deciding factor. So I, I, I think I'm ready. Are you? Because now I just probably changed your mind. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> Him and his rationalization. <laughs> <sighs> okay. One, two, three, four point five. <laughs> I was at five and went down to 4.5. I was actually at six initially. Wow. And then I was like, you know, no. And then I went to five. And then I'm like, yeah, I think it's good. And then he started talking. And I'm like, ah, yeah. And so it just pushed it that one little notch back down. Since I always more. make her go first, I'll go first. My reasoning is, based on my criteria, a five is something that I would reach for and I would drink. It might not be my first choice. This, if I had anything else in the house, I probably wouldn't choose it. If there was nothing else there, like if I was at her brother's house and we brought this, and there was nothing else and I felt like having a drink, I might do it. But it would almost have to be that kind of a situation. It's just not really something that I would go for. Yeah. And I like spiced meads. So that tells you that this just isn't great. I do personally feel the flavors in the avocado honey itself, what they give to the mead, are fantastic. However, it's too much. Just too much. If this was thinned down with regular honey, like we were talking about, this would be a lot different and probably a lot more favorable. It would be a lot more palatable. I think taking those flavors back just a bit, upping the spices a little bit, now they really complement each other rather than we had to add things to fight that. I don't want to fight it. I want them to work together. So the balance was always a little bit tenuous here. And I think we just achieved it, but it's barely there. If this were, like I say, half and half, like a wildflower and an avocado, I think this would be probably easily a seven to a seven and a half. I, I'm just not a huge fan of the flavor of the avocado honey and mead. Like, it's okay. It's not my favorite, but it's okay. So I don't think it would ever be a 10 to me. But, yeah, yeah. But it could be much higher if that flavor were toned back just a little bit. Now, if this were cold, it might be a little bit better. Yeah. I wish we actually had some tonic water on hand. Uh, some sort that. of sparkling carbonated neutral yeah. thing to mix it with. Because... Because it goes so strongly towards the cola influence, and it's still, it's not carbonated, it makes me think, would it be better carbonated? Because then maybe my brain would play better with the cola thing being a, a positive rather than a negative. Well, we do have that um, mini one-gallon oh, cake, cake that we still yeah. need to play with. we got to try that. Maybe. Something like this might be the way yeah, to do that. That's true. Um, just means we have to keep the keg in the fridge to keep it cold or figure out a way to bottle from it, which sure. is what I want to do. Right. Um, but yeah, it's super complicated. It's got a lot going on for it. It's just the things that are going on for it really aren't the things that make me excited. So right. that's, that's the inherent problem here. And I think if I could remember what it was that I found that I lost, <laughs> maybe I would like it more because I could cling on to that one little aspect of it. But I don't think that's enough to elevate its score. Now, let me just make one caveat here. We both gave it a 4.5, which is not a great score, okay? However, if you like avocado honey and you've had avocado meat before, we know the person that sent this to us likes it. Yeah. Their partner does not. And that's cool. That's okay. Some people out there will be like, Brian, Derica, you know, I love you guys, but what are you talking about? This is amazing. Right. You may think this is a 10 and 
you know what? That's awesome. That's what makes the world go around. Right. I would say if you enjoy really strong and really unique flavors, then this would probably be absolutely right. perfect for you and tick all your boxes. Um, I'm curious to see what this does in a year. Yeah. I do think in one year this will improve significantly. It'll mellow, take some of that harsh edge off. And it might be, you know, much higher in a year. Who knows? Yeah. And because it has so much going for it. Yeah, it's seven weeks old. We're not... We're not ready to, to ditch it. We're, no. we're, we still have Heck high no. hopes for this. We have six more bottles. Yeah. Several of those are going to be here a while because I don't see me drinking it all that fast. But um, But I might finish that. Tonight. Yeah, I might I might start mixing it up. And yeah, thinking, as a mixer, this might be really interesting. What would you use Coke with? You know, like a vodka Coke or whiskey and Coke? Or... Yeah. That's, you know, you mix that with whiskey. I bet you that would be really good. Yeah. Yep. And because it is so potent. And drink enough and you won't care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's it, folks. If you... Anyway, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate your support. And if you like this video, look up. There's another video up there. You might like that one, too.